I'm Rylan, and I'm going to be talking about my experience with OpenAI's chatbot in this video. I heard about it once I was listening to The WAN Show, and one of their topics was about OpenAI's chatbot, and they were just going on and on about it. It was amazing, uh, the stuff that they were just able to get it to write. So I decided to use it for myself, and I started using it for coding, and it worked great. I started using it for writing reviews about stuff and it worked great. Like the reviews were consistent about what the material was. And also there are many other creative ways to think of how to use this. I can definitely see that how this is going to make a lot of different things much easier and more productive in the future. For example, when writing code, I can go ahead and tell it to write what I want and then copy that, paste it, and then I can't just run it most of the time. Sometimes there's things I need to tweak about it. I can take that code that it made and just run with it, modify it as such, and it saves probably about an hour or two of code writing for a boilerplate code writing. I've been really impressed with what this chatbot has been able to pull off, and I'll share my experience with you. In fact, I already have. This intro was just written by the AI chatbot. I told the chatbot to write an intro script for my YouTube video and this is what it made up. And it was able to pull that off. Isn't that amazing? Of course, I did change things here and there and going on with my own experience and stuff like that. Let's hop on my computer and I'll show you what I've been able to get it to do. Hello there. This is one of the things I got it to write. Not this like front end page. This, uh, this piece actually. This is just like filler stuff that I wrote. This is a React uh, website. Here, in case you don't know what React is, it's just basically websites, but written a little bit differently than your classic HTML and CSS. Um, it's a calendar here. You can click, go forward and backwards by month, and then select the day. And OpenAI wrote this. It wrote, here, I'll show you the code for it. This piece right here. Look at that, isn't that ridiculous? It wrote all this. Now this is only a front end, so if I actually put anything in there, this is this will happen. I added this piece right here to show that it can hold the data and submit it through a database if a database was connected to it. But it's just this right here. But still, it it made this calendar. Now this is actually a third party calendar that it's grabbing technically, but still it was able to have the knowledge to create this calendar to use the resources it needed to to select a day and you know, schedule an appointment and get everything set up on the front end wise to do that. I tried to tell it to write almost the same thing in HTML. It doesn't work functionally, but it has the input, which is good. Uh, I told it to write an e-commerce site and this is the result. So if I add this and add this and add this, it'll show up there. If I add it again, what happens? Oh, it shows up again. Anyway, it's, it's a very basic setup. It's not anything that is fully functional here for an e-commerce site. I mean, it's, just what do you expect? It's not going to pump out a full application, but it will pump out like bits and pieces, which you can build to full applications. I told it to write a guide to how to use um, Mongosh because this is one thing I was learning, which is a database uh, oh, application. I told it to write it many times, and this is the best one that it pumped out. Here it has some of the commands and what they do. This is the best one, I think. This is a note taking app. So if I can just put in this and that and that I get that and then with that I think this site is pretty amazing but unfortunately it doesn't save because there's no database to save to uh, but it could be implemented in the future and also I told it to write a tax calculator depending on what state you're in here you're gonna put in like mm, two thousand dollars and we're gonna go to the state of Kentucky why not and then calculate $120 is the state tax in Kentucky if you spend $2,000. So isn't that amazing? While I'm right here, let's get it to write something. So so I'm going to put in something. So here's what I'm telling it. Write a website with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. The site should be a template for business to advertise their services. Now, earlier, like the calendar, I told it what to do in like two paragraphs. So when you are more specific, it's going to do something better. Otherwise, it's going to be generally lazy and do um, the bare minimum, which is not bad. It, I mean, like, it gives you something to go off of. It's not really meant to pump out full applications, like I said earlier. Here we go. It will stop sometimes when you're writing. Uh, so you're just going to click uh, submit again to continue it. All right, here we go. It's finished. It's, I mean, again, it's, it's kind of short here and it's meant to be just a snippet there that you can take. So let's 
implement this into a website. So here, in case y'all don't know how to do this, I'm gonna show this right here. You make a text document and call it whatever you want, web.txt, write your HTML in there, or preferably you would use a text editor, but just change the txt dot html and then yes i want to change it and this is what it wrote and that look at that i mean it's nothing that's amazing but still like it, it was able to write something like this ai can now write websites and it can write them however we tell it and if we want it to be like a complex website you would just write more complex things tell it to do um do more basically with more paragraphs and it will complain at you if you put in too much. It will just kind of break down. I have noticed that uh, when I was writing the calendar form, uh, it, w it was like, Err. but if you know what to tell it and it follows through, you could write some pretty complex things and you can take those complex things and just like roll with it, make it better, improve upon it. It's, it's a great tool for developers and not just developers, but for a lot of people. For you backend people, it can also do MySQL statements and no SQL statements. Here I'm telling you, write a MySQL query. This database table has six values, ID, name, date, time, address, and phone. Make a query that shows the table in order of names. So I'm gonna submit that, select all this, and by name. Now this is a very, very simple query, but you can do, get it to do a lot of complex things. I think there's a guide here on how to get it to do MySQL stuff. Yeah, here it is, SQL request. And you can find out how to do more stuff with that. Let's look at the other stuff it has here. Grammar correction, summarize for a second grader. <laughs> Natural language to open AI's API. So I think what that is is for when you are using the API of open API to grab something, it has a guide for itself basically, which that's pretty funny. Text to command, uh, English to other languages. There's just a whole bunch of other things in here. Uh, that's very interesting and this is all very cool you know you can get it to write many things but i think this is especially cool for uh, developers out there who can get this to write code i mean i have noticed a lot of problems with it you know like importing things it doesn't exactly do a great job when importing things in react but after debugging it for 10 minutes you can get it to write some pretty cool stuff anyway that's all i wanted to share with you like this this useful tool and how amazing it really is. Uh, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. Bye.